the Mark 6, the engine's in, it's together, full of coolant. We smoke tested it, we're about to do a first start, let's see how that goes. Oh shit, I've left the crank on the ground. What's up guys, welcome to Third Gear Grind. Today we are working on this 2012 Mark 6 Golf R. Unfortunately, this car went to a Jiffy Lube and came out with rod knock. So today we are tasked with basically removing this engine and rebuilding it. We have to send the crankshaft out for machining. We have to get new bolts and head gasket and everything. So we're gonna show the whole process start to finish. So on the Mark 6, the ECU is underneath the cowl. So we are gonna have to take the wipers off and this rain tray here, intakes coming off and the battery and the battery tray. A right, quick update, we got the ECU disconnected. We did have to remove these anti-theft screws from the bracket, followed the harness down here, disconnected everything from the PDM the charging circuit, the starter cable, the engine harness has been disconnected. Also the harness for the electric steering, upper rad hose, lower rad hose, our fuel lines, our coolant bottle, our shifter cables, our clutch line, diverter valve, hose, brake booster line, reverse switch. We also went ahead and disconnected the steering rack from the steering column down there. Since we're dropping the subframe, we're actually leaving the downpipe on for now it should be easier to remove with the subframe out of the car. And we're gonna leave the entire front end of the vehicle on. We're gonna take the AC compressor off basically and, and swing it aside. Also the cert belt has to come off because we need to remove the AC compressor. So we're gonna detension that, take the belt off. Heater core lines now removed. So we're dropping the subframe. We're gonna take the dog bone mounts out. We're gonna take the three nuts on either side of the control arms off. We're gonna take the sway bars off on uh, the one stud down here. So it's gonna be this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and then the two with the front up here. Two 13s down here, a tie rod. So I'm gonna brush this up and, and PB blast this to help us remove it. Down. Driver bolt joint, oh yeah, there we go. Mint. <laughs> all right now since the subframe's out of the way the downpipe all the axles the prop shaft is gonna be easier to remove so that's what we're gonna do next all right guys so we've got the axles kind of put aside with bungees on either side got our exhaust nuts out except for one at the top which we're gonna do now and we're about to drop the engine intercooler pipes are disconnected and we took the AC compressor off and swung it aside here. Technically, you want to remove the washer fluid reservoir, but I've left it alone. We're going to see if we can avoid completely taking it out. Oh, yeah, let's drop this thing. The exhaust is on. Now we put the big skateboard underneath. We took all four wheels off so we could get the hoist pretty low. And we're going to friggin' put it on the big skateboard and undo the engine mounts and lift the car. Let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. A little more. Yeah. All right guys, so the parts came in for the Mark VI engine rebuild. Here's what we have. We have a new timing belt kit here with the water pump, the idler pulleys and the belt. Gasket, exhaust manifold gasket, rear timing cover gasket. We needed that because I took it off to inspect the guide since we had oil starvation. So luckily that's in good shape. So we just got to put that back together. These are uh, Molle oversized main bearings. And we also have King's coated rod bearings that are also oversized. Head bolts, valve cover gasket, oil cooler gaskets, rear main seal, cam shaft crankshaft seals. And the spun bearings have been removed from the crankshaft here. Our crankshaft also came back from the machine shop. It's been now undersized. Over here, I've gone ahead and dealt with the oil pump. You can see down there all the bearing material that was still inside of it. So I flushed it with fresh oil and I took the pickup off and made sure that this was thoroughly cleaned. Now, what's cool about the Golf R engine versus the earlier engines is that the main bolts are factory 12.9 hardware, so I'm, I'm gonna end up reusing these guys. Also gonna be reusing these oil pump bolts. A lot of the engine parts I had binned up, they're kind of loosely on the shelf now. This is a lot of the top end stuff. 
Over here on the bench, we've got a lot of the bottom end stuff. So basically gonna assemble all of this stuff, get it into the engine block, and then I'm gonna move over some of that stuff over to here and begin assembling the top end of the engine. First things first, I've already gone ahead and cleaned out all the passages on here for the main bearings and whatnot. And so first things first is we're gonna lay down some main bearings, throw the crank in, thrust washers, and we're gonna plastic gauge and check our bearing clearances on not only the crank, but the rods. Our rod bearings actually spun completely. So we're lucky we get to reuse those. They did not spin inside the rod journal. So thank for that. This is what our little organizer bin's looking like right now. We've got bolts for the tensioner, the intake, timing cover, etc. All right, so just uh, kind of realized, initially when I took the engine out, I was not really paying a whole lot of attention to the transmission, but now that I look at it, it's wet in here, and now that it's been sitting for a while, we can actually see some fluid there. So it appears to me as if the slave is leaking. So we're gonna have to order a new slave. Over here, I ended up getting a, a new guide, uh, oil pump balance shaft tensioner. The old one was messed up. Got a little chewed up from having no oil. The other thing I had to do just now was actually press this crankshaft gear back on. Now, there's not really much documentation on it. Um, there's not really an, a specific orientation that I could find. The only thing that is important is that the balance shaft is correctly timed. So you can see a little dot on that gear and it's lined up with that hole there. So we're pretty much right on time and basically I had this all loosely set up before. I put the gear on just like that, put some tension, and then I was like, okay, that's the final point, and I pressed it all the way on. Now it is meant to bottom out onto the crankshaft, so that's what we have done. And uh, you can see there, our chain is pretty well lined up, so should be good to go on that. Just gotta torque the oil pump gear bolt and the tensioner bolts. Then we can go ahead and put this front cover back on and do our timing belt. Right before I do all that, I am going to just double check that this is still in time. So I'm gonna do a full rotation, two rotations, whatever it takes to get that balance shaft uh, looking like it's in the right spot and go from there. To help us with this verification, I've thrown the lower timing covers on, the metal one and the plastic one, then the gear, and then loosely, we've got our front damper here. And you can see on the plastic cover, we actually have uh, the, the timing mark and also on the pulley. So if we have everything on correctly, we need to rotate this a little bit closer to TDC. Then I can go ahead, take all this stuff back off, make sure that my cam is at TDC and time everything accordingly. Rotate it over a few times and uh, recheck my marks and you should be good to go. Got the engine lifted on the hoist, taking it off the stand. We're gonna put it on the pallet and throw the transmission on. We might have, we might actually throw the transmission on in midair. What do you think? Like with the trans jack, maybe? Oh, that's a good and idea. then put it on the pallet. Mm -hmm. I like that. Heck yeah. Flywheel's on. We're gonna do the final 90 degree turns on the flywheel bolt. That's six. Ready? Yeah, that's good. Stout. I think so. Yep. 
All right, there we have it. Our rebuilt engine is fully assembled, timed up, torqued, transmission on, clutch and flywheel. Now it's on the pallet, ready to drop this thing in the car, or rather drop the car onto this thing. You're really gonna wanna have the bevel box bracket kind of in place before you put the transmission on. Otherwise, you're gonna struggle to get it on. It basically won't be possible. What I ended up having to do was remove the turbo bracket and slide this cup outwards a bit and then kind of pry it into place but it's just the way the bevel box bracket is angled it's really tough to get it back there car's back on the lift let's get this thing in there all right we're up in the air here all the axles the prop shaft has been torqued up we got the subframe pressure washed and going in right now and just securing it to the control arms, whatnot. One thing you wanna make sure is that um, if your axles were kinda swinging around, dangling, that your sway bar link is in front of the axle on either side. So we're good there. Also got the AC compressor reinstalled. We will have to do the final angle on the crank pulley and we'll also have to install the intercooler pipe here and also our under panel. So. Making good progress. All right, quick update on the Golf R. Our brand new oil cooler has a leak at the seam. Awesome. It mucked up the factory press. And this thing is loose, the 90, and it's leaking. The Mark 6, the engine's in, it's together. Full of coolant. <laughs> <laughs> 